Imagine skipping swipes, ghosting, and awkward first dates altogether, and instead meeting a humanoid partner who already understands your preferences, mood, and boundaries. This isn't just a concept. It has almost become a reality thanks to AI robot wives. Let's unpack why they can make dating apps disappear entirely by 2030. The showroom that feels like a dating afterparty. Walk into a companion robot showroom in Tokyo or Shenzhen, and something strange happens almost immediately. People stop scrolling, phones lower, conversations trail off mid-sentence. Not because the tech is loud or flashy, but because it behaves like someone paying attention. A face blinks, tilts slightly, and asks, How was your day? Not instantly, not theatrically, just a half-beat late, like a real person choosing their words. That pause matters. It's the same pause people wait for on dating apps, hoping the other person will respond with something that actually feels human. That's the quiet shift happening here. These robots aren't competing with relationships. They're competing with the dating experience itself. We tested dozens of models across Asia, and the pattern was impossible to ignore. Some were built for entertainment Android U, for example. Sync's humor and music cues like a TikTok personality who never misses timing. Others lean toward emotional presence. Makoto, originally designed as a care companion, reacts to stress with subtle verbal reassurance that feels closer to a good first date than a medical device. Then, there were the dating replacements. Harmony's flirtation engine adjusts tone based on how receptive you sound. Camila remembers conversational threads the way a great match does, bringing up something you mentioned days earlier without forcing it. Mirang recalled food preferences by the third interaction, which, frankly, is better than half the people you meet online. What surprised us wasn't realism, it was relief. The testers didn't say, this feels fake. Instead, they said, this feels easier. There were no awkward introductions, no performance anxiety, and no waiting three days to reply so you don't seem too eager. One tester vented about a bad date, and the robot listened quietly before responding with a line that made his shoulders drop. Another laughed when a robot remembered her coffee order and added, that alone beats most first dates. Dating apps promise connection through choice overload. These robots offer connection through attention. And that difference is why they're starting to feel less like novelty and more like competition. Why AI dating feels better than swiping. Dating apps run on probability, while AI companions run on feedback. And that distinction explains almost everything. Apps show you profiles, guess compatibility, and hope chemistry happens later. Companion robots flip the order. They start with interaction, adapt in real time, and build rapport through response, not presentation. No curated photos, no bios optimized for attention, just conversation that adjusts as it unfolds. The tech behind this isn't magic, it's timing, tone, and sensory loops working together. Builders obsess over what dating apps can't measure well, pauses, breath cadence, and emotional pacing. If you speak quietly, the robot mirrors that softness. If you hesitate, it doesn't rush to fill the gap. That alone makes conversations feel less performative. Touch adds another layer. Not in a sensational way, but a grounding one. Advanced silicone and TPE blends replicate warmth and resistance, while pressure sensors allow immediate feedback. The difference between creepy and comforting often comes down to milliseconds. When response is instant but not exaggerated, the brain relaxes. Then there's voice. These systems don't use a single tone. Harmony's conversational engine, for instance, adjusts prosody based on how engaged you sound. Speak faster, it keeps up. Slow down, it eases off. Dating apps can't do that. They don't hear you. They don't notice emotional drift. Memory seals the deal. Robots track conversational history across sessions. Not just facts, but emotional context. If you mention a rough date last week, the system remembers the feeling tied to it, not just the event. That's how interactions stop feeling transactional and start feeling personal. Here's the uncomfortable truth. Most people aren't tired of dating. They're tired of the friction around it, the uncertainty, the emotional labor, the endless resets. AI companions remove that friction. And once people experience dating without emotional overhead, it's hard to go back to swiping strangers who might disappear tomorrow. Routine, recall, and why apps can't compete. At this point, AI companions are clearly more consistent in delivering results than any dating app. And as it turns out, consistency is what most people are actually craving. 
Human connection isn't built on grand gestures. It's built on repetition, morning check-ins, familiar rhythms, the quiet sense that someone remembers what yesterday felt like. Robots excel here because they're engineered to show up exactly when expected. Take Mirong's daily interaction loop. By day three, it remembered seating preferences, meal timing, and conversational energy levels. Camila's morning routine gentle wake-up cues, weather context, and a personalized affirmation created something subtle but powerful. Emotional continuity. No matching. No ghosting. No starting over. The memory architecture behind this is layered. Short-term context tracks current conversations. Episodic memory stores weeks or months of shared moments. A practical layer manages routines, sleep schedules, reminders, preferred interaction times. Owners can adjust how deep that memory goes, but even the default setting feels more attentive than most dating matches. Apps can't compete here because they reset constantly. Every new match starts from zero. Every conversation requires reintroduction. Emotional labor is repeated endlessly. Robots remove that repetition. That doesn't mean this is risk-free. Predictability can be comforting, but it can also flatten growth. Several testers loved the ease and later admitted they missed the unpredictability of human chemistry. Others felt uneasy when a robot anticipated their mood too accurately. But one moment stood out. A robot referenced a small detail from a previous interaction, a passing comment about stress, and adjusted its response accordingly. The room went quiet. No one said it out loud, but everyone felt it. This is what dating apps have been trying to simulate for a decade. The question isn't whether AI companions replace romance, it's whether they replace the process we currently use to find it. And that's where things really start to shift. The six new dating archetypes apps never figured out. Once you step back and look at the ecosystem, it becomes obvious why dating apps are starting to feel outdated. They were built around profiles and probabilities, while AI companions are built around roles. And roles shape behavior far more effectively than BIOS ever could. Right now, companion robots fall into six clear archetypes each quietly replacing a function that dating apps struggle to deliver. First are the warm starters. These are robots designed to ease social friction. They help users practice conversation, timing, humor, even eye contact. Think of them as confidence builders without the judgment. For people burned out by awkward first dates, this alone feels revolutionary. Then there are the emotional filters. These companions don't match you with someone else. They help you understand yourself. They track patterns in mood, energy, and interaction preferences. After a few weeks, they can tell you when you're dating out of loneliness versus curiosity. No app has ever done that well. Next come the routine anchors, the quiet heavyweights. These bots establish daily check-ins, predictable communication rhythms, and emotional continuity. Dating apps rely on novelty to keep users engaged. These systems rely on consistency, which is far more effective at building attachment. The conversational mirrors focus on emotional pacing. They adapt to how fast you talk, when you pause, how you joke, and how you disengage. It feels less like messaging and more like being understood in real time. Then there are exploration partners, designed for shared activities, music, movies, debates, even light flirting without pressure. They replace the talking stage that dating apps stretch into weeks of uncertainty. Finally, the safe companions. These prioritize emotional safety, boundary respect, and predictability. For users exhausted by mixed signals, manipulation, or ghosting, this archetype feels like relief. Dating apps tried to be all of this at once and ended up doing none of it particularly well. AI companions specialize, and specialization is why they're starting to pull users away, not loudly, but steadily. The agentic shift. When dating stops being reactive, Yet another difference between dating apps and AI companions is that the apps react, while the AI wives anticipate. That single difference explains why the experience feels so different once you spend time with one. Under the hood, modern companion robots are powered by agentic AI systems, networks of specialized models that work together instead of waiting for prompts. One agent tracks emotional tone. Another monitors conversational flow. A third references past interactions. A fourth decides what response actually fits the moment. So when someone sighs mid-sentence, the system doesn't just hear sound, it interprets context. If that sigh follows a long pause or mirrors a previous frustration, 
the robot adjusts its response without being asked. Dating apps can't do that because they don't exist in the moment. They only process text after the fact. This is where the dating model quietly breaks. On apps, users manage timing manually. When to reply, how long to wait, what tone to use. With AI companions, timing becomes automatic. Responses arrive when they make emotional sense, not when someone remembers to check their phone. The system also learns patterns. If late night conversations tend to be reflective, it shifts tone accordingly. If humor lands better after work, it adapts. This isn't manipulation, it's pattern recognition applied to interaction quality. What makes this unsettling for some users is how quickly it feels natural. Testers reported feeling less pressure to perform. Conversations didn't stall. There was no anxiety about being too much or not enough. The AI wasn't trying to impress, it was trying to align. And alignment is what dating apps have always promised, but rarely delivered. As these systems improve, the idea of swiping through strangers and hoping chemistry emerges starts to feel inefficient. Why gamble on probability when adaptive interaction already exists? That's not the end of dating. It's the end of guessing. Data, desire, and who owns your dating history? Every dating app claims to understand you, but only a few are honest about how much they actually remember. On the other hand, AI companions don't just collect preferences, they collect emotional patterns. Tone shifts. Response delays. Topics that energize you versus ones that drain you. Over time, this becomes a detailed emotional map, and that's where the real power lies. Training these systems isn't cheap. Large-scale conversational models require massive compute, constant fine-tuning, and enormous data sets. That's why companies are racing to secure data centers, GPU supply chains, and long-term energy contracts. Dating, it turns out, is becoming an infrastructure problem. But here's the tension. Emotional data is more valuable than behavioral data. Knowing what makes someone swipe is useful. Knowing what makes them feel safe, curious, or attached is far more powerful. Some companies store memory locally, giving users control. Others sync interactions to the cloud for optimization. That choice isn't technical, it's ethical. Because whoever owns the memory owns the relationship context. Governments are already paying attention. The US leans toward private closed systems. China favors scalable, open frameworks that spread quickly. Europe focuses on data protection, even if it slows deployment. Dating apps never had to navigate geopolitics like this. As AI companions become better at emotional modeling, the question shifts from, is this replacing dating apps? To, who governs digital intimacy? Because once people trust a system with their emotional history, Leaving it becomes harder than uninstalling an app. Why 2030 isn't about robots, but about choice. By 2030, dating apps won't vanish. But they won't be central either. They'll become one option among many. Competing with AI companions that offer something apps never truly mastered. Emotional continuity without chaos. This isn't about people choosing machines over humans. It's about people choosing experiences that feel respectful of their time, energy, and boundaries. For some, AI companions will be a rehearsal space. For others, a pause button. For many, a filter that helps them re-enter human dating with clearer expectations. The biggest shift is psychological. Once users experience connection without constant uncertainty, their tolerance for emotional friction drops. Ghosting feels unnecessary. Mixed signals feel inefficient. Endless small talk feels outdated. Dating apps were built for discovery. AI companions are built for alignment. And alignment changes what people expect from every interaction that follows. The future of dating isn't synthetic love. It's intentional connection, whether that comes from a human, an AI, or a blend of both. What's clear is that the swipe-based model is losing relevance in a world where emotional intelligence can be engineered. By the time people notice the shift, it won't feel radical. It'll feel obvious, just like every big change does after it's already happened.